Hey, what's up you guys? Big Time Collector 01 here, back at it again with another action figure review. And today, we're doing a Throwback Thursday. We are taking a look at the 2005 Justice, the DC Direct Justice Batman figure. This is a really cool looking figure. Uh, I did get this at a, at a vintage toy shop that's not too far from my house. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to take a look at it. And yeah... This packaging looks very different from what we usually see nowadays. As you know, but you know, it's very similar to you get the window box, you get the name DC Direct at the bottom. I really miss that old DC logo. We have a picture of Batman on the side. We have a bio if you want to read it, pause it right now. And then on the back, we just get, you know, more figures from the previous wave and the other figures from this wave. More of a read up if you want to pause it, you know, read it, pause it right now. At the bottom, there is a barcode, but I did get this for 25 bucks, which was a pretty good deal, I gotta say. And then just, you know, another wave shot at the, you know, on the other side. So let's get to it and crack this figure open. Before we take a look at the figure, let's take a closer look at his accessories. He comes with a battering, as you can see, it folds and, you know, it folds into like that. You know, you can just pull it out. It's kind of hard to do once you get it folded, but there you go. It's really skinny. I do like how thin it is. Looks nice. It's a simple shape. Let's get it to focus. And then he comes with this display base, which looks really cool. But the weird thing is, there's no pegs. There's no... Oh, the pe <laughs> Okay, I just found the pegs. Never, f Never mind. The pegs are in here, and you got to attach them yourself. And as you saw, the little pegs came in that little baggie. And be careful with these things. These are small, but you do just want to insert them in there into the little holes, and then you are good to go. There you go. And that's the stand. And here's Batman out of the box. And if you guys didn't know, Alex Ross is my favorite comic book artist of all time. I, I really love his artwork. It's so realistic. It's so simple and unique. And this figure really captures that artwork perfectly. This looks like it jumps straight out of the pages of Justice. I do have the graphic novel. I remember getting that maybe in 2005 when it was released. I, I believe it was 2005 when the graphic novel was released. But yeah, this looks really good. It's very cool looking. And I just really love how this, you know, was translated so well. Starting off with the head, we can see. You know, we can see he has the pupils shown. He's got those nice brown eyes. He kind of looks cockeyed a little bit, but from afar, you can't really tell. Do you like, you know, the wrinkles on the skin and on the mask? Again, just a simple look. You get a little paint slop. This, this figure is full of just tiny, you know, paint slop. But again, this figure has been in the box for like 20 years, so who knows what happened. And taking a look at the chest, the emblem is big and very appropriate for Alex Ross. He did like to make the chest emblems for Batman and Superman very big, and I really do like that. It looks really cool. And I really like the gray that they chose. This is, you know, it's very appropriate for Alex Ross to have this more lighter gray for Batman. And then looking at the trunks, again, that's just, it, it really just evokes Alex Ross's artwork. Like just look at that belt. It's the bronze. It's bronzish, bronze, bronzish. God, I can't say that. Bronzish brown look, and it's pretty cool. And then that's again. That's how Alex Ross did it back in the day. And what the hell? Oh, I, I'm just realizing this figure has some weapon storage. You fold up the battering, and you put it in the back of his belt. I'm just realizing that. That's. That's kind of neat. I did not see that. But after finding that fun feature, here's a good look at the cape, and it looks great. It's a soft, pliable material. It just, again, looks really good. And then taking a look at the boots. Really like the wrinkles sculpt on the boots. They look like they're made out of leather. And I just like these little points up here. Overall, really well done. And that's well, like something DC Direct knocked out of the park back in the day. It was getting specific artist renditions, you know. They would make everything, you know, based on a specific artist, and they would nail it. And they nailed it with this one. For being a figure that's, you know, almost 20 years old, this looks amazing. Now let's take a closer look at his articulation. 
Uh, I can't really tell what uh, type of joint his head is on. It doesn't look up or down. It does look side to side. It is a little stiff, so I'm not. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna do that. I'm not gonna try and stress that joint out. His shoulders. I'm. I, I'm pretty sure they move out. You can see. I. I doubt you can see that they're moving out a little bit, but I can feel it. But they just are stuck in there. They don't want to move out. They so I don't want to you know try and move that out and break the arm. But they do rotate. Again, really stiff. Single jointed elbows. No ab articulation at all. You can't even do a waist swivel. He has T style hips that move out that much, and then they move out, move back that much, and then single jointed knees. Measuring Batman out, he comes to around seven and a half inches tall, which is perfect because I want to put him with my, you know, my Batman Hall of Armor. And then here he is next to another Alex Ross figure in my collection. We have the Kingdom Come Batman from McFarlane Toys. And again, they just look like they jump straight out of the pages. I really like the look of these two. And I really hope McFarlane decides to make a, you know, Justice Batman. That'd be cool, but this one's going to definitely you know, work for me right now. And here he is up on the rotating base on his own stand. Also, ironically, that is not his own battering. He does not want to hold that thing. And my final thoughts for this figure, it's just okay. I mean, it is, again, 20 years old and DC Direct was not the best when it came to articulation, but they were really good with their paint and sculpt. And I gotta say, it looks good for what it is, and it's going to work for what it is. Is And I, I'm i kind of glad it doesn't come with that much articulation because he's just going to really stand there in the Hall of Armor and not having, you know, any ab or torso articulation, into, you know, that would break up the sculpt. And I'm glad it doesn't because, again, he's just going to stand, you know, in one spot with all the other Batman. So it works. I, I do like how this figure looks. It's great. Again, I love Alex Ross's artwork. And having this version of Batman just makes me super happy to have for that Hall of Armor. And it's going to look great with the Kingdom Come Batman. And you could expect a Hall of Armor or at least a figure collection sometime soon, hopefully, when I, hopefully when I get that cleaned up. But, yeah, that's my review. I hope you guys liked this Throwback Thursday because, you know, it was a little different. I found this, and I just really, really wanted to get it and review it for you guys and have it for my Hall of Armor. And yeah, and again, I did get a good deal on this guy. This, when I, I looked him up on eBay, and he was going for around 40 to $50, so 25 bucks was a pretty good deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.